So all Waverly lines are disappeared. Now I can try to test my script. So I press F5. I have to sign in. I have to select my script. Here we are. I can run my script. So what I can see here is that my script was running successfully because there's no error message. Uh, there is no return value. This is because this is a procedure and that script tells me that the whole thing happens uh, around about 9,969 milliseconds, which is a long time, but we have more than 1,000 users in the system. And to figure out if everything is okay, I use now another step. I just run the whole script in debug mode, which allows me to debug step by step and line by line my script. I click run again. My system jumps into the script. I have to know how to step forward in my configuration. F8, it's my friend. And with F8, I'm just jumping into my script. Here we are. And pressing F8 again, I can line-wise step through my script. Here it's the call of my specific ISO date function. This is my variable before I do something. This is my variable after I do something. You can see here is a specific timestamp available in the meantime and so on. Now I do have, for example, log file names and I do have CSV file names. And as you can see, there is no variable from the top. And so it is a local path information. And now I start with my work here. I get my collection object created. Here we are, 1059 objects. There is my first collection element. There is my first single object. And there should be, after seconds, my first or second last name. And here we are. It's Abele, it's my last name, so it looks like that I'm the first in the list. And once I press F8 again, I will step over that and I get another last name, for example, Abraham. Brilliant, this is what I want to see here. Now let's extend a little bit the code so that I get a proper CSV line. Once this is implemented, let's have a look at it. What we did is we just expanded a lot of different things. For example, we just created one big string for our CSV line in a way that there's always a parameter plus a delimiter. The delimiter is a constant that was just defined on top of the script. Here it is. It is a semicolon. And the next thing was to define all of these parameters. There's a parameter for last name, first name, the account name, the department and the location. And department and location was just prepared as variables as well cre uh, created at the header. Here are the variables. And um, the variables itself gets easy values right now. And if I test that, Running the script in debug mode shows me that if I step here through the complete lines that it jumps to the error section. And what happens there is that now something will be written to an error log file and there is an error. I cannot see the error right here. This is because I redirected all my errors so that I'm not able to see them in the front end anymore. Um, two ways to handle it. First way is I can now move to the error file that should be somewhere here. For example, there is my error file. And the second way to handle that is, and there's the arrow by the way, and the second way to handle that is to implement an additional line into that script that prompts me the arrow back so that I can see it on the screen. To do that, I just move back to my script and add one line more in the catch section. To do so, I have to stop the script first. And now I can add one line more code into the section. And in addition to my log, I throw a new exception and doing this, I just can try it again and I can run my script and we are now able to figure out what it is. So if I click on detail, I can see that here directly in the code, the inner exception is at the end that the value str department was not found. And that's true. 
if I just look into my code there, um, then I can see I was using here two variables because I want to use them later on, but these variables are not column names and because of that I cannot find them. So to correct that, I have just to delete this part of the story and I have to do that for both. And now, if I run the whole thing again, I should be able to handle it. And fortunately, it takes a while and uh, unfortunately, my main problem is that I cannot see something, but if I run through the script in the debug mode again, then I can just jump into it. And if I jump to my CSV line, I can now see my line. And as you can see, there is a first name, there's a last name, there is an account name. But then I see two very nice things, which are UR UIDs. UIDs are typically primary key information and they're not really helpful. What I need there is our display names. I need a display name for the department and for the location. So I have to transfer this information, this UID into something of clear text. And to do so, I use something that is called an object walker. And an object walker is something I can get as well from the SDK if I need that. A typical object walker, for example, is that one here. So there is a walker on the session object and then I get a value using that specific foreign key notation you know from other parts of the identity manager. So I take just this line to use it. Again, step back into my script code, stop my script execution. And what I need there is a combination of what I what stands there plus what I learned. So that means at the end, I need an object walker of the session object for a get value. And now I need this specific notation. So this is a foreign key to UID department, which is the first part. And there I need then, for example, the department name and the same I will do for my specification. There it is a foreign key to locality and there it is identity. Here we are. And I don't need that line anymore. I was just learning from. But I can now run my script again and what I should see now are clear names. And this time I like to jump out at the right end. So I set a breakpoint. And this then allows me directly to jump in here. And what you can see here is that I can see here the information uh, in clear text. That means the display names in my CSV line. Some more steps to implement. The next thing is I have to implement to write to a CSV file. Same than before, if I don't know what I really need, I just look into my script SDK. And writing to a file, it's something that's a lot of times necessary. And so there is a SDK sample for files and folders, for example. And I can look into that files and folders reading a text file, writing a text file, writing a text file is what I want to do. And as you can see here is a very short example. This is all I have to do. So I just copy the code. The rest is narrow handling. I don't need that. And I step back into my script and paste it underneath of my loop where I like to write into a text file. Here we are. And now I have to think a little bit because what happens here, if I create a CSV line here and I open a file for writing, whatever else it is, and I add a line into it and I close the file for each line in the complete script, the file gets opened, the code gets written, the file gets closed. And that 1057 times because I have 1057 people. This is absolutely too much. And so we try to open the file before we start with the loop. So I take the using and move it in front of the loop. Here we are in doing that. Uh, I can open my file here. I can correct as well the file name. Therefore, I need my predefined variable. Here we are. By the way, the true parameter here says append something to the file. So uh, for my specific scenario, it makes no difference because I have a timestamp in my file name, so I get every time a new file. Uh, so I can let it on true. I can as well put it on false. In this uh, example, no difference. But if it is set true, the content gets added to an existing one. 
And the second thing I have to do is, is I have just to move out the end using out of the loop. I do that here. And doing that, you can easily see I get directly an error less. And last but not least, I have to write in the line. And to do that, I take the CSV line as created and put it into my writing command. Here we are. And last but not least, to get the whole thing working, I should think about a specific kind of header line in my CSV file. And to do that, I just copy the complete line. I move up to the place where the file is open here. And then I add the header information. So, and to do that, I just create a text. And this text says last name, a delimator, first name, a delimator, then my account name and our delimator, and then department and location. And here we are. This is now my header line. And with testing the script, I should now get as well a very nice CSV file. And here is my CSV file. If I open it and look into it, you can see the header line. Here it is. And then you can see a number of data. And that should be around about 1057, 56 entries. Ah, and you can see we opened the file before the complete script was finishing the work. So I close it again and I open it again. And here we are. So 1060 lines means 1059 objects plus one header line. Next step is to extend a little bit the logging. We was interested in the number of objects and the time that was at the end used to run the complete script. So to do this, I just implement a little bit more code. And what I did here is the following. Uh, first of all, I was using the specific line we used to write something to the log and was rearranging it to show the store time. I was just creating a string that was script store at add with a specific value. I, I took store time, which is a variable I created before. It's on the top. And I just add that uh, to that specific string. The same for the number of affected objects. Here I was using the same function, plus this time I was using the collection object. And there is a specific property counts that says this is the amount of record in my specific collection. And last but not least, I was adding another line that was telling people that uh, the script ended at a specific time that is defined with now. And then I create another variable for a line break. And to format that nice and pretty, I just add here two more signs into my script code. And at the end, my last variable here is just time and displaying this as a string so that I get the complete execution. And to ensure that the whole thing at the end, it's displayed in a way I love, I just add as a specific format here seconds into my function. And with F5, I can test the whole thing. And a little bit later, I should then see a specific log file. Here is my CSV file. Here is my log file. And my log file shows me now, like I'm sure I can see it, the one the script was started then the number of, of affected person objects, uh, 1059. Then when the script was ended, and you can see as well here that it uh, was just calculating the amount of seconds the complete script was running, which are at the end 27 seconds.